these two box cars are identical. The one in the back is one that I weathered already. The one in the front is the new one that I'm going to render as a demo on this video. As you can see on the new box car, the plastic is really shiny and the lettering really stands out. It's bold and white and crisp and needs to be knocked down a little bit. Maybe some of the letters scraped off. Uh, in other words, it's just too toyish right now. This is the weathered version. As you can see, the shininess has been knocked down a great deal. Uh, the paint has been used to bring up some of the highlights of the edges. And you can see the lettering has been knocked down a great deal, so it's not this bright lettering that was on the original model. And that's what we're shooting for when we weathered the model. Examining the trucks on the new model, you see that they're nice and shiny and clean and new. And in real life, wheels on rolling stock are not shiny, especially in the center. They're rusty or they're dirty or they're caked in oil, but uh, they're most certainly not shiny, so we're going to add rust to that to make it look more real. As you can see on the weathered version, I modeled the rust on the inside of the wheels. I also added some brown powders to the truck assembly so it also looks like it has rust on it and it's not all shiny black. And again that's what we're going to be shooting for when we weathered this model. So again the model on the left is the model I weathered already and the model on the right is the new one that we're going to model for this video as a demonstration. These are the weathering supplies you will need. Paint. Get black or burnt umbra acrylic paint from any craft store. It's cheaper to get the large bottles. Paint mix. My container is two cups of water to about half a teaspoon of black and half a teaspoon of burnt umber paint. Mix well. Paint pens. Get paint pens, not stain pens. Home Depot, Lowe's, or any place that sells paint. They have real paint in them and a little ball you can hear when you shake them. Get a brown pen and a black pen. Powders. See the description below for a URL on how to make the powders. I make mine from grinding up chalk sticks I get from the craft stores. You need brown and black. Those plastic white containers you can also get from the dollar store. You can get a pack of six of them for a dollar. Brush. Get a makeup brush from the dollar store. Get the short bristle brush used for eyeshadow. Clear matte finish. Do not get shiny. Get clear matte finish. This will be used to seal the car after we're done weathering it. Hair dryer. Get a used one from Goodwill or a garage sale. Get a small one with two speeds. If you pay more than five dollars, you spent too much. All the supplies you see here will weather well over two dozen rolling stock cars and I spent about fifteen to twenty dollars for all this including the hair dryer. And don't forget your paper towels, you will make a mess. First thing we want to do is pop the wheels out of the trucks. Now these lower priced rolling stock have plastic trucks that are fairly flexible and you can pop the wheels out of the trucks. Not all trucks are like this. There are of course the better trucks where I wouldn't even try to get the wheels out without damaging the truck obviously. But if you can get them out it makes putting uh, weathering on them a heck of a lot easier than trying to do them. Simply use a small screwdriver and just pry out one end of each wheel and then just pop all four of them out. Now be careful because some rolling stock have small details like ladders, walkways, and brake wheels on the roof. And so if you set the rolling stock on its roof, you might break one of those pieces off. So be very careful when you try to get those wheels out of the trucks. Now that I have the wheels out of the trucks, we can see how shiny they are and how they really need to have some detail on them to make them look a little bit more authentic. Again, you can see on the inside of the wheel uh, that it's all shiny and metal um, and so we want to decorate those to make those a lot look a lot better. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and weather 
the tires or the wheels. And usually the best way to handle these is to take them like so, put them between your fingers, like so. And this makes it easy. You can work on them all four at once. Now again, this is my paint stick. This is my brown paint stick that I used where I showed earlier. Shake it up really well. Open it up. And what you want to do is you want to go through let me get this more into the light. You want to go through and you want to add paint to the inside well here of the wheel. Like so. And you're going to do the same thing for the other side. Try not to get any on the axle if you can, the little pinpoint thing. Because that's, of course, that's what's riding inside the hole on the truck. And it will kind of impede it a little bit. Now, we also have our powders out. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of this brown powder. We're just going to dab it into the paint. A little bit more. It's OK if you do a little bit of excess. That's fine. So again, you can see you're getting it all dusty. And then we can also take some black, throw some on there, to get a little bit of black on there. Okay. And we want to go ahead and blow that off. And we can add a little bit more if we want. I'm going to add a little bit more black here. Get more a little bit rusty, and dirty. Shake that off in there. And so there you go, nice rusty wheels. And so we're going to set those aside for now and let those dry off. And you can also, if you want, do the back sides. So you could go, for example, and go around the back side. And hit that as well. I'll just do this one. And again, you can get some dust on that. You know, the paint's all still wet so you can get a little bit of black. Take some of this off of here. So as you can see, um, I did all four of the wheels. Uh, again, the back side and the front side. Don't get any of the paint on the rolling surface or the, the fins or the flange. Um, and try to avoid getting on the steel spike shafts themselves. If you do, you can just take a little paper towel and just Kind of wipe those off. The next thing we want to do is dull down the lettering and the logo since they're too bright on brand new rolling stock. One technique you can do is take a quarter and wrap it in a couple of layers of paper towel and then use that to scrape down or scrape off lettering or parts of logos so that you get more of a dull lettering look uh, to make the car look like it's been through more weather conditions. Now this is not the only way to uh, bring the lettering down. There are several different ways. You can also use an airbrush with a mixture of white paint to dull down the paint. Uh, you can use a wash of uh, some paint thinners. Uh, you might even try a little bit of sandpaper. You're going to have to experiment a little bit on your own. The thing you don't want to end up doing is getting obvious rubbed on streaks onto the surface of the side of your rolling stock. So again, this is just going to be you having to experiment, looking at how other people do weathering. But I use this technique and I just focus on the lettering right now. At this point, we also want to look around for any kind of obvious glaring um, bad assembly that is done on the rolling stock. Like, for example, if you look underneath, some of the items may have 
uh, plastic seams on them that you can scrape off. Uh, if you do have some of the plastic is scraped down and it's pretty obvious that it's bare, you can use your paint pen, uh, like this black paint pen for example, to cover up that uh, mistake and clean it up. Uh, later on though, when we weather, we'll be able to cover that up a little bit more. It's best to start with the underside of the rolling stock first when we're going to apply the acrylic paint. That way any mistakes we make can be cleaned up when we do the top and the sides. Now the best way to apply the acrylic paint that I found was to essentially take a piece of t a paper towel, roll it into a brush, and then use that as a dabbing tool to dab the acrylic paint onto the surface of the rolling. You also want to make sure you have your hair dryer handy. So mine's plugged in and it's just sitting on my knee while uh, I get ready to start doing my acrylic paint. Now the trick as you'll see here is to soak up some acrylic paint with the paper towel and then just dab it into place onto the bottom side of the rolling stock and you can squeeze the paper towel and squeeze out uh, large globs of the acrylic paint and just kind of wash it over the surface of the plastic on the underside of the car. Some paint will roll down the rolling stock so you just want to get that real quick with a piece of paper towel. Don't let it dry there. And soak up all the excess paint that's on the bottom of the rolling stock so that it's still wet but all the large globs of paint have been soaked away. Now with your hair dryer, use it to dry up the acrylic paint as fast as you possibly can. You want all of the acrylic paint to dry up. Think of it like doing an Easter egg where you're going to get the Easter egg wet and then you're going to dry it as quickly as you can so any of the stains will dry in place. Any excess globs of paint that still remain, you can then dab that up with a paper towel. Just keep doing this technique as many times as you like until you're satisfied with how the rolling stock is looking on the underside. 